Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this day. I just have a couple of announcements before we begin worship this morning. First of all, today is special for so many reasons. First and foremost, it is Mother's Day, so I would love to extend a happy, happy Mother's Day to all the moms and the grandmothers and the aunts and everyone who serves in those wonderful, caring, mothering roles in our congregation. And in honor of Mother's Day, I am so excited because today is our youth-led service. First service was partially youth-led. The second service, we have a full, full youth-led, and it's very exciting. We have Will Mock, who is bringing us the message. Benji Heller who leads us in prayer. Sunday Mass Josari is our worship assistant and cantor. Mary Ladava is the children's sermon. Rachel and Jordan are our ushers. Nisi and Kate are our, our, our greeters. We have Ashley, Sebastian, and Jeremy up here as our youth ensemble, and we have fabulous Caleb back here as our acolyte. And I just want to take a moment to talk about this because I think it is an honor and a privilege to have these youth who are here with us today as we've watched how so many of them have grown from when they are just very small over the years to the, the leaders in worship that they are now. And it is wonderful to be a part of a congregation where these youth feel that they can fully live out who they are and live up to their potential. And so um, this is going to be a very special service, and it is wonderful to be gathered here today. So with that said, let us stand and begin worship. <laughs> Thank you. 
and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace be with you all. And also with you.
But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. <coughs> when they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke, they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. I am coming soon. My reward is with me to repay according to everyone's work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they will have the right to the tree of life and may enter the city by the gates. It is I, Jesus, who sent my angel to you with this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let everyone who hears say come, and let everyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who wishes take the water of life by the gift. The one who testifies to these things say, Surely, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus will be with all the saints. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
you guys know what day today is? But, you know, I pray a lot. 
And I know it's crazy to think about the guy who's standing up here preaching prays a lot to stop the presses. But, I mean, it's what makes the most sense to commune with our Heavenly Father, because, I mean, Jesus spoke to God in prayer. Even Jesus Christ, who committed miracles in the name of God on a near daily basis, spoke to God in prayer. So it's what makes the most sense to me. But what I pray for most often is guidance to do what's right. But when we get down to it, God very seldom speaks back to us. And for every story about how God answered our prayers, there seems to be a million about how God left us hanging. But I mean, if all prayers were answered, there might be a few too many lottery winners. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, going off of that, uh, very few of us really know and understand God's plan. But, you know, let's go for some crazy hypotheticals. So, God willing, friends, we might not be here a million years from now. Some may think of it as a rapture or a natural extinction or maybe something else entirely. But there very well might be an end at some point. And that might be very scary. And I'd be honest in saying that that's a scary prospect to even me. But there's one small piece of comfort in that fact. Because we've been playing around with interstellar flight for the last 50 or so years. And currently we have five probes that have gone outside of our solar system. So that even if we aren't here a million years from now, we have Voyagers 1 and 2, Pioneers 10 and 11, and Discovery 1. So that even if everything that is human on Earth is gone one day, these probes are flying further and further out into space, and that's beautiful. But they carry our legacy. So now I think it's time for another crazy hypothetical that relates back to us not knowing anything really about God's plan for us. There might be aliens, you guys. <laughs> and I mean, God could have just created them as he just created us in Genesis. All it would take is a single word from God saying that. And maybe one day, these aliens will find those probes. And with names like Voyager and Pioneer and Discovery, which are all beautiful human concepts, to pioneer, to voyage out and find something new and discover all the beauty and splendor that God has created. But I think a better name would be faith. Faith is the real element that defines what humans are. I mean, everyone has faith in something. And I mean, looking at today's political candidates, it might not be in our government, <laughs> but we all have faith in ourselves. Just being here today shows that, and that we all got up today to live our lives according to what we hope is part of God's plan. And I mean, we even see that in today's scripture. <laughs> where Paul was thrown in prison for doing his part in God's plan, in casting out a spirit of a woman's body through a pure act of faith in his Lord our God and being thrown in prison for it. But you see, Paul didn't protest or fight his unjust arrest. He merely sang praise to God and prayed, for he knew what would be pleasing the Lord our God and thus was able to convert, and in doing so, offer resolute salvation to his jailer. But you see, we very seldom can say and that we know what to do as part of God's plan, so cut and dry. But then in Revelation, 
the, the Jesus offers the water of life for all of those who are accepted. And this is really an ultimate sign of faith, because for the first time in all of human history, the chosen people of God are not chosen because of their heritage or their birth or anything like that. <coughs> no, for the first time, they are chosen purely based on their faith in God. And this faith and this salvation is given to all who might accept. But you see, most importantly, in our gospel lesson today, we see Jesus pray for us and for everyone. And this is really the ultimate sign of faith. For he knew in this portion of the gospel before Easter what came next. His death. And in his last night, he petitioned our Lord on our behalf. Not asking that God choose another to be crucified. Not asking that he might receive a quick death. Not asking that he be raptured on that spot. No. He prayed for us that we might be one in God. And we all emulate this through our own prayers and petitions to the Lord. And you know what? Heck, some of them might not be answered. But we know that Jesus' prayer was received. For we are all gathered here today for one in God. And this is why I have this sermon right here in front of me in an envelope to be delivered to Major General Charles Frank Bolden, President of Operations of NASA, asking that the next probe that be sent out into the vast and unexplored galaxy be named Faith, in honor of that which defined the Son of Man, the most pure example of what men are and that which truly defines all human life.
here into one, let us share in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in the abundant life and love of Christ Jesus, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of the people in need, and the life of all creation. God of renewal, fill us with your overflowing grace and mercy. Gather all of your people to join in the abundant life we share together in your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through the blossoming of your creation, show in us your righteousness and power. By the wind blowing and the fire burning, the earth growing and the water flowing, through the birds singing and the stars blowing, give us the strength and courage to join in your song and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us live harmoniously with the people of this land. Let the nations come together as one in your salvation, to let peace conquer war and love conquer hate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all the people who suffer today, wrap them in your heavenly arms. Keep those who feel isolated because of illness, grief, status, or the prejudice of others. Especially, we pray for. We pray for all who are listed in our bulletin on this day. We especially pray for the family of Paul George, who died peacefully this morning at 8.45 a.m. We ask, gracious God, that you be there with comfort for his family and friends. And we pray in thanksgiving for David Schroeder, who was able to share with them the commendation of the dying. We also pray for Edith Hartley, who is facing some pretty serious health concerns. And we pray for Dwayne Youngquist, who is facing a serious medical diagnosis of cancer. And we pray for all of those who we now reach. We have thanksgiving and Fill them with your holy and undying care, and welcome them into your community of grace, mercy, and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Bless those who serve as a mothering role for your children. Send strength to those who mourn a loss. Love to those who have not been able to know or connect with their mother. Hope for those who want to be a mother, and courage for those who are supporting others as mothers. Lord, in your mercy. For what else do God's people pray? We pray for the residents of Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. As nearly 90,000 residents have to evacuate the city from the fire that has spread to nearly the size of Portland and Vancouver. Lord, in your mercy. You draw all the saints into your presence. Draw us into the mystery and wonder of your overwhelming and loving presence 
until Christ comes again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We deliver all this into your care, O oh God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share signs of peace with one another. Under the breath 
This is the second Sunday, therefore it's Brown Bag Sunday. Brown Bag Sunday, okay. Yes, it is. So, All right. Uh, we are collecting for the month, this month. Okay. We are collecting protein with, uh, foods for the, for the uh, food bank and for um, Mill Plain Elementary School. If they have their, if it extends through the summer, they hope that their food bank there will extend through the summer. Outstanding. Will you be out in the narthex if people yes, want to talk to you about brown bags? No Sunday? notes, but, but bags. But bags. Sounds really good. Thank you so much. We will receive our offering at this time.
holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Amen. Amen. So in confidence we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table of life is spread before you. Feast on the goodness and mercy of God.